In this video lesson on analytical geometry, we're going to look at the gradient. And an overview, we are go going to start at calculating the gradient. Then we're going to look at parallel and perpendicular lines. And then finally, collinear points. Now, when it comes to gradients, we are also concerned with straight lines because the gradient is a property of the straight line. So basically what the gradient tells us about the straight line is its steepness. So if you think of this as like a mountain that you're climbing, uh, this can be uh, have a gradient of like three and then it has a, a, a greater steepness than something that has, for example, a gradient of one or a half um, that would be less steep. So the higher the gradient, the, the steeper uh, the slope will be. Um, and then also if the gradient's negative, then it will just basically slope to the other side. So the formula for a straight line, the gradient is the m value, the coefficient of, of x. That is the gradient of the line. And the formula for the gradient of the line is the change of y over the change of x. And um, what do we mean with that? Now, in order to use the formula, we need any two points on the line. And we can just plot any two points and call the one in terms of x and y, x1, y1, and the other one, x2, y2. Then the change of y is basically the difference between the two y values. And the change of x is the difference between the two x values. So the more common way to write the gradient formula is as follows, where we have the gradient is equal to y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So this is just taking the y value for the one point and minusing the, it with the y value of the other point or coordinate. And then that gives us the distance and then also doing the same for the x values. Now, something that we are allowed to do is if we want to, we can also write y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it doesn't matter which uh, coordinate points you substitute in first. The only thing that's very important is if you do choose um, y1 first, then you have to put x1 first as well. Or if you have y2 first, you have to put x2 first. Now, this is then our formula. Now, let's look at applying it. So calculate the gradient of the line adjoining the points G and H. Now, whenever I calculate the gradient, um, we start off by just writing the formula first. Um, so gradient of G H, and then we just write the formula. So let's say one Y1 minus Y2 over X one minus x2 so you can also if you want to in the subscript um, use the notation of, of g and h if you want to um, or just write it like this but um, it's it's good practice when we're working in analytic geometry when you're using a formula just write the, down the formula first and then substitute into it now another thing that i do personally um, that's up to you i like to list my points underneath each other like zero and five and negative two and three it just helps me to remember which one i substituted in first because in my mind i just tell myself top minus bottom so then i don't get confused um, about substituting in five minus three and then accidentally saying minus two minus zero um, so i go five minus three over zero minus negative two zero minus negative two um, then I've substituted in my X values and my Y values. Okay, but you do what how it works for you the best. Okay, so then five minus three is two. And then if we uh, simplify this and also be careful when you substitute in or working with negative values um, that it is a negative two. So it has to be substituted in as negative two. And this negative is a part of the formula. So make sure that you don't just write minus two, but that you do write minus negative two. Um, and then that becomes a positive two. And then two over two is just one. Okay, so that was the basics on calculating the gradient for any two points, a line that joins any two points. Now let's look at parallel and perpendicular lines. So first parallel lines, if I'm given a line y equals to m1 x plus c, and I'm given another line y equals to m2 x plus c, and then I'm told that the two lines are parallel to each other. Then what is true about these two lines is that their gradients will be equal. 
And it makes logic sense because if you have two lines that run parallel to each other, their slope or their steepness is exactly the same. So that means their gradients must then be exactly the same. And then when we look at perpendicular lines, so again we'll have the line y equals to m1x plus c, and then a second line y equals to m2x plus c, and we are told that they are perpendicular, meaning that the angle between them is 90 degrees. Then what is true about their gradients is that if you multiply the two gradients, they will always give you negative 1. Okay. So this can be used in a number of ways. You can basically use this formula to prove that two lines are perpendicular given their, their um, gradients. Or you can be given one line's gradient and told to find the equation of another line um, using this formula. But that we will also look at more when we start with a section or, um, of straight lines that you've started in grade 9. But uh, late in the year we're going to do functions and then we start with straight lines and then this is going to be applicable. Okay, so for example 2, consider the points given on the Cartesian plane below. Now prove that JK is parallel to ML. Now if I need to prove that two lines are parallel, I know that the gradients must be equal to each other. So for A, if I have JK over here, and ML, and I need to prove that they are parallel, I'm simply going to calculate the gradient for JK, calculate the gradient for ML, and then if they are equal, I can state that and say therefore they are parallel. So first of all, I'm going to say, okay, the gradient for JK, and just to write down the formula, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, and then substitute in my points. So we've got 6 minus 4 over 5 minus 8. 5 minus 8. Okay, and if we simplify that, we get 2 over negative 3. Okay, so we can basically say it's, it's negative 2 over 3. Right. Then we can calculate the gradient for ML next. And we've got y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then we substitute into so ML lies here. So we've got 3 minus 1 over 3 minus 6 and again this becomes 2 and this is negative 3 so I'm just going to say negative um, 2 over over 3. All right so now we can see that both of the gradients are equal to negative 2 over 3 so we can say that the gradient of JK is equal to the gradient of ML and therefore JK is parallel to ML. Now let's look at B. So now we need to prove that JL is perpendicular to ML. And we know from perpendicular that if we multiply the gradients together, they should give us negative 1. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the gradient of JL and then the gradient of MK. So gradient of JL is equal to, and then just the formula over x2 minus x1 and then substitute in so jl is 6 minus 1 over 5 minus 6 and this gives us 5 over negative 1 this simplifies to 5. Next we can find the gradient of mk and write down our formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and then we can uh, substitute so mk let's say 4 minus 3 over 8 minus 3 and this then oh sorry this would simplify to minus 5 actually because we've got 5 divided by negative 1 so that's minus 5 okay so then we have 4 minus 3 which is 1 and 8 minus 3 which is 5 okay so for the one we've got a gradient of negative 5 and for the other we've got a gradient of 1 over 5. So let's look at if I multiply the two together, JL multiplied by gradient of MK, then MK, um, then it's equal to negative 5 multiplied by 1 over 5. The 5s will cancel each other and then I'm just left with negative 1. So that holds. Therefore, JL is perpendicular to MK because the gradients multiplied together gave us negative 1. 
then for example 3, calculate the value of y in each case if p, q, r and s are the points p, q, p, 4 and minus 3, q, 5 and 1, r, 1 and 4 and s, 5 and y. Okay, so we need to calculate for this y. And um, first of all, when the condition is that these two lines, the p, q and the r is, is parallel to each other, and then secondly, what would the y value be if the lines are perpendicular to each other? Now, basically, when the lines are parallel, we know that the gradients must be equal. So I can basically set the gradients equal and substitute in my gradient formula and even this r is in terms of y and that will leave me with an equation where y is the only unknown so then i can solve for y um, for the y value that will actually make the gradients equal so this gradient of pq is equal to the gradient of r s and then let's substitute in so we've got let's start from this side we've got negative 3 minus 0 so that's our y values over 4 minus 5 and that is equal to from this side my y values 4 minus y over 1 minus 5 okay now to solve for y we can just simplify every individual numerator and denominators so this becomes negative 3 and this becomes negative 1 and then this is equal to 4 minus y over negative 4 Okay, so the next thing I can do is just because I'm working my way towards y now. So the next thing I need to get rid of is this negative 4. So I can use cross multiplication because we just have one term equal to one term. So I can cross multiply that up. But this in itself can become positive 3. So the negatives cancel. So positive 3 multiplied by negative 4 gives me negative 12. And then I'm left with 4 minus y. Now the next thing I can do is just take the y over to the left hand side and bring the 12 to the right hand side and changing their signs. So I've got this coming over and becoming positive y equals to 4 plus 12 and then y is simply equal to 60. Now for the other condition for b, what do we know about the gradients if the lines are perpendicular? We know that the gradients multiplied together must give me negative 1. So I'm going to say that the gradient of pq multiplied by the gradient of rs must be equal to negative 1. So I can substitute again like I've done here. I can substitute in the gradient in terms of y and solve for y. So the gradient of pq we saw was negative 3 minus 0 over 4 minus 5 multiplied by um, rs. So that is going to be y minus 4. Um, Okay, I just did it the other way around, but that's fine. So uh, y minus 4 and then 5 minus 1 over 5 minus 1. Okay, is equal to negative 1. So there I did my substitutions and all I have to do now is to solve for y. So I'm going to simplify this again. This becomes negative 3 over negative 1 multiplied by y minus 4 over um, 4. And then that is equal to negative 1. Now, to simplify on this side first, this just becomes 3. Okay, So if I just multiply 3 with this bracket, you can think about that. Um, or we can just multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together. So before that, I'm just going to cancel these negatives. But then it becomes 3 multiplied by y minus 4 over uh, 4, because 1 and 4 is 4 and that's equal to negative 1. Then what I can do is to cross multiply again. So I can take the 4 up and I can bring the 3 down. So I'm left with y minus 4 is equal to negative 4 over 3. Okay, because the 4 went up and the 3 came down. And then the final thing is just to take the 4 to the other side. So y is then equal to negative 4 over 3 um, plus 4. Okay, because it was subtracted on the other side, now we have to add it on, on the right hand side. Whereas here it was multiplied and divided, so we times and divided it on this side. Okay, and then we can just basically work that out on the calculator. And this is going to be negative 4 
over 3 plus 4. So that gives us 8 over 3. Okay, so that was the second section done. Now just to do collinear points. Now, what are collinear points? Collinear points are basically three points that lie on a straight line. So if we find that these three points, A, B, and C, um, and we have a line going through them, we need to determine if they're collinear or not. And basically to do that, we're also going to use the gradient. Now we can calculate the gradient for, for the line AB, then we calculate the, the gradient for the line BC, and if we find that these two gradients are not equal, then it means that the line is, or the, the points are not collinear because they don't lie on a straight line. Next, we um, can, in an, another situation, basically have our three points, A, B, and C, and if we do calculate gradient of a b and gradient of b c and find that the the gradients are equal then it means that the lines are collinear so the questions are pretty simple um, they can tell you um, determine whether the, the the points are collinear or not you basically calculate the gradients see if they are equal and then say whether they are collinear or not okay so for example four sh show that the set of points x y and z are collinear so in this case they're actually telling us that they are collinear we must just prove it and to do that we are obviously going to find the gradient um, of x and y and the gradient of y and z now just a side note on this we don't necessarily have to plot these points um, to know which one's in the middle you know so that we can find let's say this is um, x y and z uh, because initially we actually don't know which one lies in the middle if we don't plot them um, but let's say we want to find out if these lines are collinear we aren't um, we we have a few options we don't have to find the gradient of x y and then the gradient of y z if you instead find the gradient of x y and then the gradient of x z that's also fine so that would also prove that they are collinear or alternatively you can find the gradient of y z and the gradient of x z and that would also, if they are equal, that would also be proof that um, these three points are collinear. Okay, so that's just a note. So it doesn't matter which combination you use, as long as you just use two set of points. Right, so let's find the gradient of x, y. So gradient of x, y, I'm just going to write the formula. So y1 minus y, y2 over x1 minus x2 and substitute. So let's start from this side. We'll say minus 5 minus 1 over minus 4 minus negative 1. Okay, and then simplify. So this is minus 6, and this is minus 4 plus 1. So that becomes negative 3, and then this becomes 2. All right, then we find the gradient of yz. So yz. And we've got y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and substitute. So it's 1 minus 3 over negative 1 minus 0. Okay, so then we have negative 2 over negative 1 and that also simplifies to 2. All right, so then we saw that the gradient of xy is equal to the gradient of y z so therefore they are collinear so you can just say therefore collinear okay then for the last example example five calculate the value of x if it is given that the points j k and l are collinear so basically we know that these points are collinear but we need to find x and for collinear points we know that the gradients are equal so I'm again just going to set the gradients equal and then substitute the gradients in their formulas and then I'm going to solve for x right so we've got gradient of k l must be equal to the gradient of um, ooh, I just did now gradient of k l uh, must be equal to the gradient of j k let's say j k right so 
I'm going to say that the gradient of KL is going to be um, y minus y, so that's minus 4 minus negative 1, and that's over 1 minus x, so 1 minus x, okay, is equal to, and then um, jk, so we can say 6 minus negative 4, 6 minus negative 4, over minus 4 minus 1, so minus 4 minus 1. Okay, now all that's left is to solve for x. Now I'm going to simplify that. This is minus 4 plus 1, which becomes negative 3. This is 1 minus x, and then this is 6 plus 4, so that's 10. And then this becomes uh, negative 4, negative 1 is negative 5. Yeah, negative 5. Okay, and then furthermore, we can use cross multiplication because I want the x to be in the numerator. So I'm going to use cross multiplication. Then I'm going to get um, minus 3 minus um, times by minus 5. That gives me a positive 15. Um, the 10 can also come down. Okay, um, So that's over 10 equals to 1 minus x. Okay, So I basically took the 1 minus x up. I took the minus 5 up and I brought the 10 down using cross multiplication. This then simplifies to 3 over 2. Okay, so I'm just going to... Um, okay, so, so if I 5 goes in there, 3 and in there in 2 times, 3 over 2, then I can take this 3 over 2 to the right-hand side and bring my x to the left-hand side. So this is going to be a positive x equal to 1 minus 3 over 2, okay, because it was a positive value on the left-hand side. And then we can just calculate this. So x is then equal to, and this is the same as uh, 2 over 2. So then I just get um, 2 minus 3. So this gives me negative 1 over 2. So this is basically negative half. Okay, then we're done with the final section and we're done with this lesson.